Does wearing masks help prevent the spread of COVID-19? The CDC's website says yes. Still, many people around the world are asking this crucial question right now. Let's look at the data. Between July 2nd and 14th, 2020, the New York Times and survey firm Dynata worked together to ask 250,000 Americans this question. How often do you wear a mask in public when you expect to be within six feet of another person? The respondents could answer with never, rarely, sometimes frequently, or or always. This data was categorized into each of the 3,142 American counties, giving us this map, where darker colors depict almost everyone wearing masks, and pale colors depict almost nobody wearing masks. For those curious, the five US states with the most people frequently or always wearing masks were California, Delaware, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Hawaii. And the five U.S. states with the fewest mask wearers were Idaho, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. Now, while it may be fun to look through this data, it doesn't actually help us uncover the connection between mask wearing and COVID-19 cases. So in this data visualization, I plotted each U.S. state's mask wearing prevalence on the x-axis. So mask wearers are on the right, and non-mask wearers are on the left. Then I plotted the state's rate of new daily COVID-19 cases on the y-axis. So the sicker you're getting, the higher your state's bubble appears. My goal was to see if there was any correlation between these two variables, mask wearing and COVID-19? And if so, how strong is the correlation? To measure that, I'm drawing a yellow trend line of best fit, using scipy.stats.linregress to do least squares regression. Next, I need to give two disclaimers. First disclaimer, correlation does not imply causation, especially in a dataset like this. There are so many underlying factors that could also influence COVID-19 rates that aren't visible on this graph. For example, the first states to get hit hard by COVID were also coastline states that received a lot of international travel, and that's a factor that probably affects both COVID-19 spread and mask wearing rates. The same is true with the fact that most of these early states also had large urban populations, another influence on habits and disease spread. Second disclaimer, the data on the x-axis only comes from one survey's responses from early July, a single point in time. Since the survey was only collected once, we can't really show changes in states' mask wearing habits as months go by. So I'm making a massive assumption that the rates people wore masks in that July survey were both truthful and were the same as they've always been in the the past or will be in the future, which definitely isn't true. I mean, a state's population might choose to wear masks in July because they had to endure a massive outbreak in April. So yeah, it sucks that we can't see when mask wearing habits changed. Anyway, we're done with disclaimers now. So next, check out that news event in the upper right corner. It's actually the highest rated post to reddit.com slash r slash news on that day, which I scraped with api.pushshift.io. Now, since Reddit is a US-based company, the posts lean very America-centric, which is a downside. However, this whole video is about US states, so I think it's fine. Next, let's talk about the trend line statistics. The R value is the correlation coefficient, and the R squared value tells you how much of the variance in the United States' COVID-19 cases can be predicted by the proportion of mask wearers. Finally, the P value is testing the null hypothesis, as in, if the true slope were actually zero, how likely would we be to see the data that looks this correlated by chance? By October, the United States entered its third wave of COVID-19 cases. We saw states like North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, and Wisconsin surpass 600 new cases per day per million for the first time ever. Also, these states were noticeably less urban than previous hotspots like New York, New Jersey, and Florida. Why was this happening? Well, I'm not an epidemiologist by any means, but it could be due to colder temperatures that left people bundled indoors, sharing disease in closer quarters. Also, holiday celebrations for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's brought together a lot of families that likely shared the disease unknowingly. By mid-December, Los Angeles, California became the nation's hotspot, while the rural Midwestern states subsided. LA is home to lots of celebrities and influencers who probably collaborated together making videos way more than they should have. That's pretty selfish of them, but I don't think that's the main cause of this latest spike, because they are such a small minority of the population. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys the same data visualization, but with county bubbles instead of state bubbles this time, so there's 3,000 instead of 50. 
but I'm not gonna commentate it because it's 4 a.m. and I wanna get this video out as quickly as possible so it doesn't get out of date.